Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Come, ye, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. <laughs>sa Amsterdam, hindi o gaano nakatulog kagabi, sobrang ingay kasi nagsisipagdatingan yung mga tao mga 10 oras ng gabi, alas 2 alas 3 ng umaga we're gonna enjoy the day kahit maaga pa lang, alas 9 pa lang dito at napakalamig, negative 1 uh, gagawin ko ngayon, food trip lang tayo papakita ko sa inyo, iba't ibang klase ng mga street foods dito sa Amsterdam, mga dapat yung tikman dapat yung makita, dapat yung kainin kapag nandito, kapag dito kayo pumunta Sa likod ko, Dam Square, sikat na area dito sa Amsterdam. Kagabi, punong-puno yan ng tao. Actually, hindi lang kagabi, kahapon pala. Hindi ako makakuha ng picture, pero buti na lang ngayon. Gakaunti pa lang ang tao. At nakita ko siya ng gusto. Napaaganda niya. There are two things na kilala ang Amsterdam. Ano? Una doon is yung weeds. Pangalawa is prostitution. Bakit weeds? Kasi alam nyo sa bawat sulok ng Amsterdam may mga source na nagtitinda ng cannabis, ng hajj or nung iba't ibang klase pa ng dahon na pwede nyo subukan. Bakit naman prostitution? Kasi andito yung pinakasikat na red light district I think sa buong mundo, ano, yun yung dawalan dinaan ako na siya kahapon dinaan ako na siya kanina, pero for some obvious reason, syempre hindi ko naman siya pwedeng i-film or hindi rin ako pwedeng mag-take ng pictures, may mga polis na nakaabang, nakaantay at nagsisita nagko-confiscate ng mga camera nyo eh, ng video equipment nyo kapag sinubukan ninyo yun, ano pero let me give you an idea paano ba nagsimula ang red light district dito sa Amsterdam Let's go back into the history of Amsterdam ano kasi nung unang panahon Fisherman's Village ang Amsterdam ano napakalapit nito sa harbor so kung fisherman ka ano ang importante sa iyo dalawang bagay ano yon um, alak at babae so nagkatayuan ang mga cafes dito sa Amsterdam at doon na rin nag-start ang mga brothels o mga prostitution at nung sinakop ang Amsterdam ng French under the leadership of Napoleon Bonaparte, nilegalize niya ang prostitution. Ano nangyari nung nilegalize niya ang prostitution? Ano? Nung nilegalize niya, required yung mga babae na mag-undergo ng medical checkup at least twice a week. Kapag healthy sila, nakakuha sila ng red card. Kapag may sakit sila, nakakuha sila ng white card at kailangan nila magpagamot. So, andun, andun na yung baseline kung paano nagsimula ang red light district dito sa Amsterdam. Next question marahil is magkano ang starting price kapag pumunta ka sa isang red light district. Ano, ibibigay ko siya sa inyo, um, 50 euro ang starting price doon. Bahala ka lang mag-negotiate kung anong gusto mo. Bahala na kayong dalawa mag-usap. And uh, then uh, you have to understand na uh, they pay taxes as well. They follow the protocols and regulations of the municipality. It is a legal business here in Amsterdam. It would be very interesting siguro mapaitaw sa inyo kung ano yung itsura ng red light district ano pero sa ngayon hanggang kwento na lang muna so pupa maglalakad ka sa isang alley yung alley na yon is masikip lang cash for one person and 
pagkapasok mo doon, kalagitnaan banda, you will be greeted left and right ng mga salamin with red lights at ang doon na nakapwesto yung mga babae. Uh, pag naka-on ang red lights, ibig sabihin noon available yung babae at pwede mo siyang kausapin. Pag hindi naman siya naka-on, ibig sabihin busy siya and naka-close din yung curtains niya. So, hindi ka pwedeng magstay lang doon, magstare manood, uminom, kailangan mo dumiretso at kailangan mo bilisan yung pag-iisip. Yan ang aking kwentong red light district. Ano, andito na ako ngayon sa Albert Cube Market. Indonesia and Suriname were colonized before by the Netherlands. Yun yung reason kung bakit pag nandito ako sa Amsterdam or even some parts of the Netherlands, may makikita kang Indonesian restaurant or Suriname restaurant. Andito na kami sa Albert Cup Market. Six times a week siyang open. So from 6am hanggang 5pm open ang market na to. One and a half kilometer siya. Ganun siya kahaba. And kapag gabi naman, may mga markets and may mga cafes and restaurants dito. Pag gabi kasi tinatanggal nila itong mga market stalls na nandito. Oh, this Dutch bakery dito sa The Pep, Amsterdam. Nag-start to 1900s. Dito kami kung maunang kakain. Typical Dutch bread with powdered sugar. I'm trying pastai. Indonesian snack. It reminds me of samosa or even empanada. My meat, my egg, napasarap. <laughs> I shall do this slow motion for you so you can see how the how it works. I open it. Okay. Then you put the bag. There's a, you know the. Then the skin, very slowly because it's fragile. Okay, thank you. Guys, pay attention yeah. because everyone's gonna clean his own feet. <laughs> <laughs> then you, t you use your thumb to open it to the end. Now he's doing it because if you put the knife inside without uh, using his thumb first to separate the bones from the, the, from the fish, you get the small ones, you know? Inside. Really, really so you do it with your thumb, not you with your knife, then... Yeah. Now, there, there are a few ways to eat the herring. Yak is gonna show you the professional way to eat it. Really, really soon. We're not gonna eat it that way. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you eat it when you just wanna taste the fish, but uh, we're gonna have it in a soft bun with some pickles and onions. I'm trying herring again. Sinubuang ko kahapon, pero this time it's in a bun with pickles and onions. Big line of people here. Most of them are coming for the pom sandwich, and here it is. Next stop namin, pom sandwich came from Suriname's na may halong influence ng Portuguese. Um, she was fast with the sandwich. inside it bakes on two sides the uh, these irons are 300 degrees each when it is baked I make another one I have to slice it exactly in two parts and that's the difficult part I'll tell you maybe and then in one part the syrup comes between and the other side goes on top so I try to slice it exactly in two parts if it not works then I don't get it up close <laughs> It's very thin, you see it? I have to slice it exactly in two parts. It looks very easy, but it isn't. One and two. Applause. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not necessary, but it's very welcome. <laughs> Strop waffles, first time ko siyang titikman na bagong gawa lang. It's the oldest one here on the plate, four years. Dates with nuts. This one is the uh, Old Amsterdam. Old Amsterdam, I think. Yeah, Old Amsterdam, that's the famous brand here. This one is goat, uh, goat cheese chowder, young one, older one, truffles, and garden herbs. Yeah, we have covered it. We done with cheese yesterday and down here. We cheese now. This cheese na naman kami. Sinabi sa amin ng owner that the last two days of the year they don't pay tax so mas mababa yung presyo ng mga cheese dito. I'm taking some smoked cheese and old Amsterdam cheese. Dadaling ko siya pa Antwerp. Can I give you a free cheese, yes? Oh, thanks a lot. Ik heb nang vraag, moet dit nog in de eskast? Nee, is niet nodig. Mag wel, hoef niet. Thank you all. Bye bye. I bought some cheese with me and nung sa dalawang binili ko na cheese na nandagdagan pa ng isa meron silang good luck cheese na pinamimigay nila at the end of the year Pampaswerte lang daw yun So yung nakakainin namin ngayon dito sa food trip tour na ito french fries syempre I'm done with the food tour. Glad na ginawa ko yon. Hindi lang ako na busog. Mas nalagdagan pa yung kaalaman ko when it comes to Dutch cuisine, ano? So ngayon ala una na ng hapon ano ng gagawin ko bago bumalik na Antwerp. Dadaan mo na ako sa bahay ni Anne Frank. Sikat na sikat si Anne Frank kasi nga gumawa siya ng diary habang siya ay nagtatago with her family from the Nazis noong panahon ng World War II. Ipapakita ko yung bahay kung saan sila nagtago from the outside doon makapasok kasi wala akong ticket and then titingnan natin kung gaano karaming tao ang gusto nung pumasok doon Ayun. Ito yung bahay ni Anne Frank Dito na ako sa bahay ni Anne Frank um, Sa right side ko, yun yung luma niyang apartment Kung saan nagtago ko kasama ng family niya Sa left side ko naman, yung museum um, Kung saan ka pwedeng pumasok kapag may tickets ka Kasi yung tickets, only available online Tsaka sinasuggest nila na magpabuka ng ticket mo At least two months in advance Um, hindi ko nagawa yon Duma na talaga ako dito para mapakita sa inyo yung itsura niya. Napakaraming tao. Super busy dito. Magtitake lang ako ng pictures and then sa tingin ko, doon ko natatapusin ang vlog for today. Ano? So, sa mga nanonood ng vlogs ko, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo and let me greet you a happy happy new year and a blessed 2020 ahead sa inyo lahat. Maraming salamat. I'll see you again on the next vlog. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayo sa travel vlogs next year at maraming maraming pang ibang surprises para sa inyo. Bye-bye!